Our Iman did it. Listen, man, the airway's clear when he got through. Because if you want to talk stuff, he didn't want to talk to you. It was silent and everything. Was, he did it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Religion, religion on the line is one I remember. There was a whole bunch of chatter all of a sudden, man. Phew, clear. Love white ball. Right. That happened to me in Philly, too. They was arguing with me about making that thon, and, and I was making the, <laughs> doing Taj Weed one time, and I finished, got said, nigga, this ain't R&B. <laughs> you thought I was singing. <laughs> this ain't R&B, nigga. And the Arab had a thing, said, no, brother, he was doing Taj Weed. But the most of them guys were selling dope. Right. Right. They was all selling dope. Right. Right. So the night of power, we're there, and, then, and, and one guy says, uh, if I see a Muslim selling dope, I'm going to be here, and he's going to be over here. I said, if I see that nigga, I'm killing him. I'm killing him. I said, because he might sell dope to my child. So the big dope dealer came to me. Oh, you don't like dope dealers, huh? I said, absolutely not. I don't. He said, well, I was a dope dealer, but I wasn't the average running the mill guy. We moved big stuff. I said, well, you was just a big dope dealer. That's all you were. But Allah blessed me because... The next Juma, I saw all the dope dealers. When I walked in the door, they all turned their head. Yep. He's selling dope, he's selling dope, he's selling dope. Huh? Yeah, right. So the next time I got ready to make that line, them niggas parted like the Red Sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? Parted like the Red Sea. I said, oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm good now. You know who I am, I know who you are. Right. Oh, we don't play with this thing, man. We're serious right. about this. Mm -hmm. No playing, you know? And that's what they don't understand. And I'm telling you, the nature. Uh, a dog attacked me at my gate. Pitbull. And that dog was strong, man. I was kicking him. He was flying up in the air, still biting. <laughs> $13,000 worth of shots, uh, rabies shots. Right? <laughs> so finally, I kicked him. My leg went off a money man. I fell back, and the dog jumped on me. I said, I got you now. I grabbed his neck, and I flipped him around, right? Right. Put my my, my thumb's in this juggler vein. <laughs> and I had designs to kill him, right? And Allah made me say, Bismillah out loud. I said, Bismillah. I said, he ain't supposed to die. Right? So I let him go. He was passed out, though. He stayed out about three minutes. He woke up and looked around. <laughs> Pew! He's gone, right? <laughs> but a month later, He's sniffing around the gate, the guy walking him. He's sniffing around. He's sniffing around, look at him, saw me, he's here. <laughs> Got you, brother. Good. He understood. That's natural. He said, I ain't going back to what I'm running from. And that's what we have to do with some of these people. You have to whip them till they break loose. Don't let them lose. Whip them till they break loose, because they're not going to come back to what they're running from. And some of them we just have to make an example of. You know, and a lot tell you, you have to do, he said, you ain't going to establish nothing without a purpose, right? So my wife kept asking me, why don't you run? Why don't you walk with me to the park? I said, ah, nah. Police start killing people. I'm working out. <laughs> they ain't going to catch me faking. Why don't you <laughs> set up, push up? Man, you got to have a purpose, right? But look, we have to establish New Africa. We got to do it. And I want to play you this clip of Imam. Briefly. Yeah, if it's okay. Do I have time? Okay. See, we got some of this technology too. It's supposed to play. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm going to be finished for today, inshallah. <laughs> we were told under the Nation of Islam, under the Army Lights Muhammad's leadership, We were told that Mr. Farad said that he had 17 million keys. And the same Mr. Farad said that our population at that time was 17 million people. 17 million. Now, you know, the record doesn't show that. It shows much less than like, like 9, 10, or 11 million at the most back then, you know. But let's look at his language, what he gave us. He said, we number 17 million in the United States. 
Then he says he has 17 million keys. I heard the Almighty like Muhammad said, say with his own mouth. He said he intended to get every one of you. Isn't that what he used to say? <laughs> you heard it? Many of you I'm looking at you back there, you sit in the temple in the sea set like I did. I, I sit in the audience until I started being a minister and I sit up on the rostrum. But many times, even after I got being minister, I sit in the audience with you all. Because the main minister, well, I was not the main minister. It was somebody else, Sheikh Shabazz, uh, later, Brother Yusuf Shah. Yeah. yeah. So I was in the audience like you and with you, sitting in there, sitting in the audience. And we heard the army like Muhammad say that he, is, he said we're going to get every one of them. Every one of them. Now, that's my belief. <coughs> that if we got something good, it's for all our people. But should we wait for them to become Muslims? <coughs> we supposed to be helping them. We don't have to wait for them to become Muslims. The Uncle Elijah Muhammad built bakery. Under his leadership, we did it. But that's it. He, he, he's a figure that we have to recognize that started everything. Bakeries, restaurants, clothing stores, printing press for the paper and all those things. Thousands of acres of farmland and trucks to bring in the goods, etc. Bring in watermelons and this and that. Big, big picture. So he opened up jobs for non-Muslims, didn't he? Yes, and non-Muslims were working. Not just Muslims, non-Muslims. He, he provided jobs for them. We should do the same thing now. But we should be more serious about building the life of a community and the life of a people that need that their community life built up. We should be more about that than we are about looking at business and dollars coming in from business. <laughs> I'm going to stop it right there. Law of Yeah. That's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right with that. And like I told you, Allah says he could build, he could bring something within a whole other universe without using anything from this one. Without a shadow of doubt. Allah has blessed us. We have a product called switchgrass that we can use for ethanol, alternative fuel. Money while we sleep. Cause that's how you build a nation. You can't. I'll build not. We're not building a nation. We're trying to go build a community. Mm -hmm. But that's how you do it. You can't do it with a bake sale and a fish fry. No, brother. <laughs> we gotta have money that comes in all the time. Mm -hmm. Every gas station in America uses 10 percent ethanol. Mm -hmm. America has a mandate of 37 billion gallons by the year 2017. Mm -hmm. That means they gotta have that. Mm -hmm. Somebody gotta produce it. Mm -hmm. Why not us? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I said, to do that, it'll take, uh, we need a million acres of land because we want to be the biggest ethanol producers in America. Arches Daniels Midland does 1.5 billion gallons. ConAgra does, I think, 1 billion gallons. We want to do 2.5 billion gallons. That's 1,500 square miles of land with a million acres for a million acres. I thought that was a big deal. They got 74,000 miles of potatoes. 74,000 miles of potatoes. We just need 1,500 miles. Right? That's all we need. We get 1,100 gallons an acre for this grass. 1,100 gallons an acre. So, in producing that, somebody told me that Imam Muhammad tried to bring a car from Malaysia called a Proton. Last year, October last year, <coughs> In, uh, President Obama set up a summit in Malaysia for business. I was on my way there. They shut the government shut down, so he couldn't go. Who do you think they're looking at? <coughs> they know that I was on my way over there, and I'm not on my way over there representing Wally Ali. They know that I'm representing us. But we used to say, Imam said, uh, uh, 
He came with the, the phone calling the phrase, we cannot stop now. Right, so right. We, we adapted that in the culture. We said, Brother Amen, we can. He said, we cannot be stopped now. That's right. <laughs> we cannot be stopped now. So come on with whatever you got. What do you used to say in the, in the first? We like opposition like a bowl of beans. <laughs> Eat it up. <laughs> come on with it. Right? Huh? Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's what we used to say. But look, it ain't going to happen if you don't love each other. Right. Forget it. And what did the law say? He says, the prophet Sallallahu said, he said, you will not enter paradise until you have faith. And you will not have faith until you practice loving one another. Mama used to love you with a stick. <laughs> she loved you. That's right. So we're not afraid to criticize when it needs that, but we shouldn't be afraid to praise when it needs that. And we shouldn't be afraid to follow when we got leadership. Shouldn't be afraid. We love this brother. We love each other. He loves us. We're one people. I said, man, I'm a good guitar player. What I'm going to do, I got to go to Detroit and establish this business. But I'm a guitar player. Good. And they, now they offer me all kind of stuff now. Brother call me here. We got distribution with Sony. And, uh, you ain't going to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't give it to my son, you keep it. Because he could. I got a son that's 22 years old. That plays guitar and sings. I didn't know he sang until last year. That's a shame. He wouldn't even tell me. Can I play this a little bit for you? <laughs> This is my son. I don't know why you picked that song. That's one song, and there's another one. I'm going to show you another one, inshallah. But he can sing, and he plays guitar. Like his dad. So what's my point? Naturally, Allah blessed me with a son that could do what I wanted to do. Same thing. We got it, man. We got it. Same thing. It's our, it's, it's our future. My son our creator them. grew up since they were babies before they could sit up listening to you. Oh, praise, praise be to Allah. Allah. Praise be to Allah. Allah. They sons will be listening to your son. Praise be to Allah. That's right. And we're going to be gonna be watching them run this business in Detroit. I'm going to be right there with them. Because in 10 years, I'm going to be gone. You know, I ain't dying. I'm just going to be on my boat somewhere. You know? <laughs> but look, we got to do this. In establishing this business, look, this this grass don't only give us ethanol, but we get biodegradable plastic from this grass. That means plastic bottles won't be all floating in the ocean for years. In a month, they go back into, this is Allah blessing us with this. Yes, sir. I hear you. They say, well, what about, it's such a tremendous task, Brother Wali. It's a big deal, man. You, you got big aspirations. Nurture your idea. I said, Noah built a boat. Mm -hmm. Right? When the cloud in the sky, <laughs> when the river nowhere, <laughs> huh? when the ocean nowhere, and Noah built a boat. Mm -hmm. A lot is. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So, what? We can't do this? We better do this. You're right. Once the Lord show you, you better. We better do this, man. Allah has blessed us and then um, I'm, I'm looking at the industry I'm really studying it now and they say uh, what the industry what the electric car industry needs is a sustainable battery that's right. Mm -hmm. that's right I was with some millionaires about a month ago I'm up in Oregon and they just built an electric motor and their biggest problem is is the battery mm -hmm. there's a brother in Memphis named Spaceman 
He built a battery that lasts for 30 years. He made it out of grass. <laughs> Johnson grass, uh, crab grass, and clover. They said, how did you do it? He said, a lightning bug gets his life from this grass. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I heard about that before I really understood who, who uh, uh, Spaceman was. So I looked on the internet and found Spaceman. They, Spaceman applied for a loan for his car. They uh, denied him. So he took a forklift motor and made his own car. Huh? And not only that, he took the old radar detector and made the car stop 15 feet from anything it, it wanted it to. He took a receiver from a cabbage patch dollar that he can call the car and say, come here. Tell her to go where he wanted to go. Huh? The woman was interviewing and the car was circling around. Right? After he finished, he made a stop right before. They said, why are you calling a spaceman? They was interviewing the old man in the city. Right? The old man said, when you go into his house, he tell the refrigerator to turn up to 55. He tell the, the television, turn on channel 5. Huh? <laughs> tell the stove, warm up to 475. He's saying it does everything you tell it. Then when you walk out the house, he say, shut down. See, that's why we call him Spaceman. He came from here. <laughs> I thought he was an old man. He's about 40 years old. He's about 40 years old. And he said, God made everybody like an airport. Everybody got an airplane in the airport. He's saying, he said, you're not going to be successful in anything unless you have God. Hello! I'm looking for a spaceman in daylight with a flashlight. See what I'm saying? And I'm talking to another brother. They got all kind of scientists in Detroit that are frustrated because there's no industry. It's our job, man. This is our job. And what is that? That's the beginning of New Africa. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. If we bring, uh, say for instance, and, and let me tell you about Malaysia. Malaysia, this car is, and, and one of the, 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 the guys in Boston, he's the biggest car dealership in Boston named Ernie Bach. And he's a guitar player, so that's how I met him, right? Guitar player. So <laughs> he came to one of my concerts, and when I finished, I said, Ernie, we're thinking about bringing the car, the Proton, from Malaysia. He said, well, Malaysia might not be the move. China might be better. And I understand why he said China, because China got $3 trillion over here that they can't spend anywhere but here. So they look at the market. Malaysia is Muslim. I ain't got to learn no language to talk to them. I can go over there, and not only that, I got Imam Muhammad's bio, and I can go over there, and we're going to get that call over here, man. <laughs> They'll bring it. They just built a 4,000-acre plant, test track and everything, in, in Egypt. We just get them to duplicate it and put it in Detroit. That's right. Make them a partner, a 50% partner with us. They've been in business since 1983. They've only sold 10 million cars. We can sell 10 million cars a month here. They need this market. They want it. They're everywhere but here. We are the conduit to bring them here. Like minds connect. See? And what does that do? That provides jobs for our children, employment for our children, Positions for our children. The majority of the children while Wallace's age, they got college degrees. Yeah. They need this kind of thing, man. That's right. Allah has blessed us with it. Let us do it. We need your help. We need your help. We need your money. Oh, we don't trust Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> but I do trust Allah. I trust Allah. Yeah. And that's what we got to do. Why? Because we, I'm 60 years old. All we got. What do I need? What do I need? Good future. That's what Imam said. Make him a good future. Mm -hmm. oh, like See, they didn't understand me. I told them, I said, man, I'm a soldier. I don't do nothing that I don't get a permission for. <laughs> they thought I was a renegade. You just, yeah. Wally Ali, he just roll up on Imam any time he won't do. No, I roll up Imam when he asked me. I didn't bother Imam like that. Come on, man. You know? No, I roll up on him when he said, I want to talk to you, Brother Wally. <laughs> Only one time we did it uh, haphazardly, he came back from, from uh, Rome. He, he had to go to bathroom. He said, let me go to bathroom. I'll be right back. He said, I thought they was going to convert to Catholicism. <laughs> 
He said it, it was kissing rings and everything over there. I was like, like he was real, man. I loved him. All and I know you all did too. But we got to do this. We got to do this, man. We need the best minds that we can get for this. I'm willing to go. I'm, listen, I'm going to Detroit. I told my wife, I burnt the boat. Ain't no way back. Now for me, it's either going to be New Africa or Janazza for me. <laughs> That's Detroit. I'm going to Detroit. New Africa or Janazza. That's where I'm at. And, and what? Oh, it's cold. It's cold there. Cold in Detroit. Imam Muhammad said, when the people come in, people warm, the weather warm up. <laughs> we can change the climate. You do. We don't understand how powerful we are. We act like we just a bunch of Negroes. We not, man. We way far from that. We've been way far from Negroes. We are Adam and Muhammad together. That's who we are. We can change the weather. We can change. And men change their circumstances. They don't just remain that way. We change the circumstances. The world of men say you're not a man until you can feed yourself, clothe yourself, house yourself, provide your own transportation and communication. We got 43 million African Americans and we ain't got a dang thing. Our responsibility, brothers. 43 million of us. I ain't talking about Africans and Somalians and all that. I'm talking about, within we got about 50 million people. But I'm talking about just African Americans from Georgia, Texas, Alabama. <laughs> 43 million of us. They only got a million Koreans in this country. They got two cars. Mm -hmm. The Kia and the Hyundai. A million of them. Some in New York, some in D.C., some in, in, in L.A. Right. Just a million. Right. See? We got 43 million people. Who are they waiting on? They waiting on us. They waiting on us, man. And we got to stop acting foolish. Right. And all don't don't want to come. Stay where you at. Stay where you at. We don't need you. We don't want you. And you come against this, we'll break your. <laughs> Put that where you want it. No. <laughs> no, because we don't have time to play. You don't have no reason to come against this. You have no reason at all. None. What reason you have? What reason you have to argue with us? No, you got something in your heart. I told Imam Muhammad, I said, Imam Wallace, I said, I asked Allah, why did Imam have all this light and he wasn't, he wasn't arrogant? Because Prophet Muhammad said, knowledge is the lost property of the believer. <laughs> so if I got knowledge, it belongs to you. It belongs to me too because I'm a believer. But it don't belong to me exclusively. It belongs to you. And Allah gave it to me, so he tested me to see if I'm going to give it to you. That's how it works. Imam Muhammad said, you think it was two dogs and a cat in the audience, you think I stopped talking? Mm -hmm. No. Because I have a job to do. We all have a job to do. We are the inheritors of the religion of Muhammad. That's right. We're not Negroes anymore, man. Oh, that's right. We're not. we way far from Negroes, brother. <laughs> we have to put, pool our resources and get this done. You think I'm going to trip if a man goes and say, man, I could be the CEO. I'm going to let him be the CEO. I don't care. Put me on the assembly line. Yes, sir. But that's the spirit of our people. Uh, uh, Mr. Dudley, he said a woman, he, would, he had a problem. He needed $40,000. He said he must have walked for about 15 blocks, praying and asking God to bless him. So when he got back, an old woman came to him and said, I got the $40,000 and became a worker in his business. That's the way I am. I'm a worker in the business. I don't know everything. I do know this though, I have the faith to see it through. I hear it too. I got the faith. It's a done deal. You know, I got it. You know, and I ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> I ain't got nothing else to do. You know, it's a done deal. It's a done deal, brother. T, it's a done deal. So that's what I'm saying. We got the website. You can go on it, www.theswitcheson.biz. Look at it. We got a plan, we got the business plan, we got the executive summary, we got everything we need for the investors, you know, 25,000 to get in, you can pay a dollar up to 25,000 people, you can pay $1,000 with 25 people, whatever, how you wanna do it, but we need to do it. 
We need to do it. I went to Vienna in 2009. Can you give us a website? www.theswitchison.biz. They gave us a proposal to fund our project for $100 million. I'm talking to a Israeli writing Arabic and telling me about Sharia money. He's from Israel. These people ain't tripping. It's green for them. It ain't about whatever they think these people are tripping on. And he told me, he said, these brothers got the money. He said, they can give you six million or six billion. Doesn't make any difference to them. You know why? Because they understand the term Sabah. Sabah is seven, seven hundred, seven hundred and seventy million, seven hundred and seventy billion. Where does the term come? It comes from Allah says, if all the trees were pins and all the oceans were ink with seven oceans to back it up, not seven, seven hundred and seventy billion oceans to back it up, you won't be able to exhaust the wisdom of Allah. Game. It's endless. I got this, I got this, I got this. Cut the leaves on one tree, nigga. That's what you do. You'll be there for a while. That's just one tree. One tree. And a little bitty tree. You got to be a big tree. Allah don't have no shortness and abundance. The shortness comes from what we think. How we think. Oh, we, you know, man, you know, I know shortness. We just have to begin to understand that Allah has already blessed us. And the more you hold on to your money, the more you're going to keep it. The way it goes. The more you let it go. Money, why do you think they call it currency? It's got a flow. And every time you put some in it, it charges the current. It's got a flow, man. It can't be jammed all up. Because really, the dollar ain't worth about 18 cents. To tell you the truth. You're going to spend it here. You try to go outside of the country and spend it. You're going to lose. I went to Japan in 1995. The dollar was even with the yen. A cup of coffee cost me $9. <laughs> and then it fell lower than the yen. I said, y'all got to pay me in yen. <laughs> y'all need it. Don't pay me a dollar. Pay me in yen. Because I was making more money in yen. You see? So the dollar's gone. It's gone. You can only spend it here. But let us spend it to make a future for me. To make a future for you? No, let's make a future for us. And let's make a future for our leader and make him a bright future. He said, in the, in, I, didn't, I didn't really play the rest of it, but in that particular same thing, he said, it don't take a long time to do this. I'm talking about the pioneers. You'll be able to see this in your lifetime. In 10 years, we should be finished with New Africa. we like the $6 million man. We got the technology. We can build him, baby. We can build him. Abu Dhabi, I went in 1995 and 2005, they had changed the whole facade of the city. Ten years. We can do the same thing in, New, in, in Detroit. You can go downtown Detroit and you can come up to New Africa. And it's going to look better than Detroit. Why? Because these people are, are urban planners. The city will give us the land. Why? Because they want what they call butts in the seats. <laughs> They want tax base. Yeah. That's what keeps the lights on and the suit.